Well, this leaves O'Dwyer with no real choice but to fire a sizable bet at it. I mean, on. oh my god. Oh! Okay, that's elite player Steve O'Dwyer moving in with six high, heads up for the 50k high roller at the PCA. That's a big moment. Looks like Brian, Byron Kaverman's going to have a decision with top pair there. I mean, these are two titans of the poker world here, going at it Luminaries, for all the money. Luminaries, some might say. There's still a quarter million dollars that these guys are playing for. Let me tell you, there's no deal or anything like that. This is legit. I'm excited to see what happens. This is a big deal hand, and that's probably why it was suggested by Nacko Ball on Twitter. You know what to do. Use this Twitter address. I know, Twitter address. I mean, you're calling it yeah. that. I mean, it's a handle, Twitter, but whatever. Twitter handle, when you suggest, include a YouTube link and a timestamp. Do all those things. Now, we are going to break down this hand as we go through it. But before we do that, we have to take a moment and acknowledge the company that makes this video possible. That's Nitrogen Sports Poker. Nitrogen Sports Poker is not only great for making this video possible, they're also great because it's a good poker site. And we have exclusive Poker Guys tournaments that you can only play if you use the link in the description. Those tournaments have huge overlays. We do them every month. Ridiculous overlays. Yeah. And by the way, they're crazy cheap. They are 0.1 millibits, which is like a dollar. 20 right about now and isn't going to be that much more even if bitcoin goes through the roof and there's a huge huge prize pool every single time there's always crazy money to be made you got to get in there and get you some poker use the link 2016 taking home just under a million dollars and that is only the seventh highest prize he's ever collected in poker in his career which is ridiculous yeah steve o'dwyer is Messed up. <laughs> Not the most famous name in poker to the man or woman on the street, and yet he is 12th in the all-time money list. Yeah, I mean, I think f for those in the know that really follow the circuit, they know that he's a... Uh, he's quite a prolific figure. Another double gut shot here for O'Dwyer. Kaverman with the two over cards. So yeah, I'm going to expect. 50 -50. Yeah, I'm going to expect to see Byron uh, continue with the two overs here a fair bit. Not necessarily because he always thinks he's best, but because um, you know sometimes he is ahead and sometimes when he floats this flop, uh, if he turns a jack or a queen, maybe O'Dwyer will be barreling it. I think in a situation like this, we might, you know, with the double gutter. O'Dwyer would want to slam a jack or a queen card, expecting, and wow, there it is. And that might that might make this a very expensive hand for for Steve O'Dwyer, unless of course he's able to pull out a miracle on the river. He does have outs, and he will probably continue to barrel here. He bet 125 pre-flop, 125 post-flop. And now he's made it 320 to go. Now, in this spot, do you call here or do you pump it up? It's just a call, man. You're you're in that like like really advantageous bluff catching situation where you're extremely under repped and your your range is kind of capped to like what's perceived as in like an eight or a four. Um, so it, 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 it will make Steve more inclined to make a big, big bluff on the river because you, you know, you, you oftentimes you don't have a jack in your hand. Three or a seven would change everything here on the river, but it comes the eight of spades. And that's actually a, a really great card for Steve O'Dwyer. I think it's going to make him less inclined to want to bluff. So is it time to take a little trip to Value Town for Byron Kaverman? He's checked it. Well, this leaves O'Dwyer with no real choice but to fire a sizable bet at it. I mean, oh, oh my god. Oh! <laughs> when I say sizable bet, Such. didn't expect it to be all of his chips. How much do they have? 
Okay, let's take a pause here and think about Kaverman's decision. This is a very difficult decision, and that's a problem for Byron Kaverman. And I'm talking about a pause because this guy likes to pause. He <laughs> likes to wait about 12 minutes before checking on the flop, stuff like that. This tournament doesn't allow him to do that. It is a time bank tournament. He's out of time banks. Yeah, so he's going to have 30 seconds to make this decision. We're going to have a lot more time to talk about it. Thank the Lord, because this is a tough, tough spot. Kaverman decided to play this weird from the get-go by deciding to check call out of position with just queen jack high with no draws. I guess he got the backdoor straight draw on the flop. That's it. He must have had nefarious intentions from the get-go, really, with this. Otherwise, I can't imagine him normally calling here. Oh, he absolutely wasn't calling because he thought queen high is good. No. And if queen high is good, by the way, O'Dwyer is not going to slow down. So right. Kaverman has some aggressive actions in him later until he spikes this jack right here, which makes life a lot easier. Yes. When you actually kind of spike something that you didn't necessarily expect, you're like, oh, now I can just play this for value. That's pretty cool. I hope he bets again. Yep. And indeed, O'Dwyer does bet again on the turn. Not super surprising. He has a non-showdownable hand that does have good equity. He can build the pot and set up this really beautiful river shove where he's essentially shoving slightly less than the pot, right? And I think he's shoving basically on almost all river cards that don't make him a pair, although this one is kind of a questionable one. It is questionable. I want to talk a little bit more about the turn bet first okay. and just say that you wouldn't necessarily expect somebody with so much showdownable, not showdownable necessarily, but so many good things that can happen to his hand allow himself to get blown off the hand sometimes. But he actually has way more jacks in his range than Kaverman has in his, so Correct. a wire can rep the jack pretty well. Yeah. That's why he decides to bet, and Kaverman can't really raise with pretty much any of his range unless he flopped a set at this point. Or maybe two pair. Yeah. Okay, so we get to the river, and O'Dwyer clearly had this plan all along. He'd sized it well along the way to be like, okay, it's this is for your tournament now, and it's about a pot size shove. This is a tough decision for Kaverman, but before we get to that, should O'Dwyer be shoving, even though he had this plan, on this card? I don't think he should, actually, yeah. and I understand why he is. You know, you're sitting there, you got what? You got six high, right? You got it's the old six not, high. Not super great, really, and you think, well, this is the way to win, and that's a normal way of thinking. Yeah. I actually believe if, if this was a normal tournament without the time pressure, O'Dwyer probably would have found a check, because this eight of spades is a horrible card to shove on. Kaverman, I think Kaverman has a huge amount of eights in his range. Yes. He also has a fair amount of spades in his range. I don't know, man. This doesn't seem so great. Right. Well, Kaverman's spades are mostly just the ace-high spades, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, that's true. So let's, let's take an, another approach to this and say, is there anything good about this shove? Okay. Is it possible O'Dwyer thought this out really well and we're wrong here? I mean, there's always a possibility, right? Yeah. But it seems to me that Kaverman's never going to fold trip eights or better. No, and I don't think so. he's going to fold most other things. But the other things that you could reasonably expect Kaverman to show up with as O'Dwyer is, I don't know if we're really going to see ace highs anymore because the flush comes in. Right. I don't know if he's necessarily going to call ace high on the turn. So we're really just trying to fold out a four. But there aren't that many. There's as many eights as there are fours, maybe even a few more for well, Kaverman. Well, there are fewer now. Okay, there are fewer because there's two on the board. Yeah. But Kaverman might fold a four on the turn, but he's never folding an eight on the turn, right? Okay, so you failed completely at trying to find a good thing about the shove. Oh, yeah, I I'm, I'm, yeah. can't do it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I, can, just... I can think of one thing. Okay. One thing. That is that O'Dwyer has all of the super strong value in his range. At least he's doing a good job repping a big hand. He can yeah. easily have a flush. He doesn't have to have flopped anything because he's just c-betting, right? He can have any flush in the deck. Yeah. He can have any of the eights. I, I definitely believe he would have continued betting an eight on the turn. Yes. So at least he has that going for him, okay? That's, that's, that's great. That's a good thing, right? No, that's true. He, he can have it all. Kaverman can mostly have it all, too, though, as well. They can both have it all. You know, like, <laughs> like a family and a career and all of these things <laughs> at the same time. Love. They can have it's love. It's like Grey's Anatomy trying to have it all, you know? Is it like Grey's Anatomy, though? I don't know. I haven't too, seen that show since 2004. Too many I people think. die on that show. Yeah, too I guess many. so. Okay, so <laughs> we, not, we don't necessarily think it's a great show, of, mostly because Kaverman can show up with so many good hands. I mean, it's just if you think about the range of hands that Kaverman has that he's calling the turn with, most of those are hands that are ultimately probably going to be able to call the river with too many of them anyway. That um, that Steve O'Dwyer just I mean, I mean he's going to fold. Gonna he's going to fold a four. Yeah, he might fold a jack. It's weird for him to have a jack though. You don't expect to see no. pretty much any jacks. Turns out he has one, but that's not what you're targeting. You're just targeting a four, I think, as O'Dwyer. Well, here's the great lucky thing for Steve O'Dwyer. Kaverman has a jack. Yeah. He doesn't have one of those super strong hands. And because Kaverman's range includes so many super strong hands, Kaverman has to strongly consider folding top pair because he has so many better hands in his range. I thought it's something that's good about Steve O'Dwyer's oh, yeah? shove. Yeah. 
Kaverman sometimes, if he has a super strong hand, is probably going to bet out on the river, donk it, because he'd be concerned that a Dwyer might check back some reasonably strong hands, True. like kings or aces or, or something nines, like that. something like that. Yeah, but hands that may feel like, oh, God, what do I do, where they're sort of automatic checks, sure. but maybe may have to at least think about calling, right? So that, that cuts out some of Kaverman's strength anyway. Not enough of it, though. I agree, but at least some of it we could probably throw out, at least sometimes. But still, we don't like the shove necessarily no. on this card. We like the idea that O'Dwyer had, but on this card, we don't necessarily love the shove. Right? But I, I do think having a jack in this spot, you probably do have to fold, even though it's heads up. Right. I, I mean, it's such a bad Like river. I said, O'Dwyer is lucky that Kaverman has this part of his range. And as Kaverman, we just have to fold, right? I, I think so. Let's see what Kaverman does. Wow. That is so, so tough to call. And yet. Now, we can see that. Byron Kaverman has a jack here, but he's also perceived to have a lot of eights. So the fact that O'Dwyer is still going all in, um, it makes O'Dwyer's range look even stronger. So like, even though he has a jack, it's still a bluff catcher. It's still the same thing as a four at this stage. So he's trying to deduce. So if, if O'Dwyer's still willing to shove on this eight, that means that he knows that I have an eight as an eight, some, I have an eight sometimes. So he must have. So a stone cold bluff or better than an eight. Yeah, maybe he's, he's, whether repping, it's he's repping a backdoor flush. But, uh, you know, tons of flushes, um, you know, the nut eights. Look at the shot clock going maybe down. He's got, no, he's got no time bank cards. He has Hero. no time bank cards. Hero. Wow. Oh, no. Show him. I mean, it's going to be shown anyway. He does fold in the end and he shows his cards. Wow, that is going to really <laughs> hurt. I think if you had any time banks, I would have just checked. Oh, wow, he uses the time bank so thing. So many rub downs. That's a great meta, deep. meta thing. Sun 41. <laughs> well, I guess Brian Kaverman agreed with us, and I think Steve O'Dwyer also agreed with us, because you hear him say this. If you had any time banks, I would have just checked. But now, that sounds like, I know you're going to figure this out. I know this is a bad card for me to shove on. I'm lucky you didn't have any time banks. That's pretty much what Steve's saying, right? I mean, I think so. Yeah. And again, I think if Steve had time himself, he may have found a check back on this river, even though he knows he's going to lose yeah. otherwise. But let us know what you think. Do you think this was a good shove ultimately by O'Dwyer on this card? Do you think Haverman just has to call with top pair here anyway? Let us know in the comments. We're looking forward to see what you write. Yeah, now we've seen Brian Ka Byron. Is it Byron? I think it's Byron. It's Byron. Kaverman, I think once before, and it was against yeah. Jason Mercier in the Aussie Millions. That was a pretty cool hand. We did it quite a while ago. If you want to check that out, click right up there. I'm just going to say this. He's got another really tough decision with yeah. a top pair type of hand. And there's no time bank limitation in that one. So, so I think we cut it down, but oh, man, yeah. he tanked a lot. We definitely cut yeah. it down, and that's... Our gift to you. Yeah, you're welcome. Also, you're welcome for the podcast of this hand. We did oh. an in-depth podcast yes. of this hand where if you want to hear more about the flop, the turn, pre-flop, everything, random jokes that don't make any sense, check out the podcast. You definitely need to check out the podcast. Yeah, it's the breakdown presented by the Poker Guys. You can find it on any app you like that has podcasts, iTunes, you know, whatever, all those places. Yeah, the places. And yeah. if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel.